Access your free language gifts of the month right now. Here's what you're getting this month. First, the writing a journal cheat sheet. With this cheat sheet, you'll be able to keep a diary in your target language and talk about your day. Inside, you'll find phrases for common daily activities from morning to night. Second, if you love travel, then you'll love our brand new travel words and phrases PDF ebook. Learn all the must know travel phrases with this ebook. Download it for free right now. Third, must know words and phrases for your resume. If you want to write your resume in your target language, then this next one minute lesson is for you. Fourth, the top 12 April Fool's phrases. Want to prank others and speak more of your target language? Then you'll want this April Fool's phrase list. Fifth, the must know vocab for doing laundry. If you need language for practical situations like doing laundry, then this one minute lesson is for you. You'll learn how to say washing machine, detergent, softener, and much more. Sixth, free audiobooks. Unlock our huge library of language learning audiobooks. Save them to your device and listen and learn. They're yours to keep forever. And finally, the deal of the month. If you want to finally master the language with lessons by real teachers and our complete language learning program, get 31% off premium or premium plus with the You Can Speak sale. So to get your gifts and language learning resources, click the link in the description below. Download them right now before they expire. Hello everybody, uh, this is Marzena from polishpod101.com and today I want to talk about two different ways of giving reasons in Polish. So to give reasons in Polish you have basically two choices and we will talk about both and we will uh, say what the difference is and there is mostly difference in structure and because of that the meaning changes only a little bit but they are very very similar so first of all uh, one way of giving reasons in polish is to use the word żeby or aby and you can choose whichever you like better so you can choose uh, you can use żeby or you can use aby the meaning is the same the formality level is the same roughly and they both means they both mean in order to in order to and to use żeby or aby in a sentence you must remember one very important rule so both żeby and aby are always being followed by an infinitive so a verb in infinitive form when we give reasons, of course, they are always being followed by a verb in infinitive form. What does it mean? Well, infinitive form is just like a dictionary form, like the, the simplest form you learn and then you kind of conjugate that and make it more difficult. So actually this is easy to use because you just use the verb in infinitive form. And it can be single verb or it can be verb as a, with many other words together, so as a phrase but it, the verb in that phrase has to be in infinitive form. So now, let's look at a couple of examples. Uczę się polskiego, żeby pojechać do Polski. Uczę się polskiego, żeby pojechać do Polski. This means, uczę się polskiego, I'm studying Polish, żeby, in order to, Pojechać do Polski, go to Poland. And again, like you can change this żeby here into aby, and there is absolutely no problem with that. This is the same sentence. So you can also say uczę się polskiego, aby pojechać do Polski. And this, the meaning stays the same. Notice that the verb pojechać here, pojechać, is in the infinitive form. And in Polish, Almost all verbs in infinitive form have this ci at the end. So pojechać is the dictionary form, infinitive form. Pojechać do Polski. So this is a, a whole phrase. Doesn't really matter if it's only a verb or a whole phrase, but the verb has to stay infinitive. Then we have next one. Ćwiczę, aby być w formie. Ćwiczę, aby być w formie. Again, we start with uh, a verb here, ćwiczę, I exercise, 
aby, in order to, być w formie, być w formie to stay fit, in order to stay fit. So exercise in order to stay fit. Again, we have bitch, bitch is the verb, so to be, and it's in its infinitive form. Again, the chi here is kind of showing us that it's a verb in infinitive form. And you can change this aby into żeby, not a problem. Now, the last example is a little bit different. So, przyjechałem do Polski, żeby uczyć się polskiego. Przyjechałem do Polski, żeby uczyć się polskiego. What does it mean? Well, przyjechałem do Polski means I came to Poland. So, notice that uczę się or ćwiczę, they are both in the present tense. While przyjechałem is actually a masculine form, so a guy would say that. Uh, and this is a past tense. So this is past tense from the, from the verb przyjechać, to come. Przyjechałem, I came. So you can use this żeby or aby with past tense, with future tense, with present tense, it doesn't really matter. It's all here in the first part, while the second part always stays in the infinitive form. So the first part can be past tense if we are talking about past or future tense if we are talking about future or can be present tense if we are talking about present. But the second part always has to be in the infinitive form, so the dictionary form. And also one important note, so here you can use żeby or aby, whichever you like. Uh, but also, there is one more usage to this. So this is giving reasons, but please note that żeby with past tense, so not infinitive form, but past tense, can be also used for requests. Requests. So not reasons, but requests. We will not cover it here today because that's a little bit different topic, but please remember that if you don't use it with infinitive form, but you use it with past tense, then it's a request. And then we have another way of giving reasons. So we already covered żeby, uh, aby, and we will look at another way. So now, another way of giving reasons is in Polish is to use bo. Bo means just because, and it's very simple uh, and very similar to English actually. So same as in English, because is being followed by a sentence, and here, in Polish as well, bo is being followed by a whole sentence. So not only infinitive form, but the whole sentence. And for example, you can say, uczę się polskiego, bo chcę pojechać do Polski. Uczę się polskiego, bo chcę pojechać do Polski. This means almost the same as we've done before. So uczę się polskiego means I'm studying Polish, bo, because, Chcę pojechać do Polski. Chcę. I want to. Because I want to go to Poland. And please notice that if we take this first part and we just leave chcę pojechać do Polski, that's a perfectly formed sentence. And it means I want to go to Poland. And you may say, oh, wait a minute, there is the verb in the infinitive form, pojechać, that's true. But that's not our main verb here. Our main verb here is chcę. And chcę comes from verb chcieć, which this is infinitive form of it. And chcę is already conjugated. You can also say, the same as we had before, ćwiczę, bo chcę być w formie. Ćwiczę, bo chcę być w formie. Ćwiczę, I exercise because I want to uh, stay fit or I want to be fit. Again, again, if we take this first part and we just leave chcę być w formie, that's perfectly well-formed Polish sentence and it means I want to stay fit, I want to be fit. And one more, a little bit different example. Przyjechałem do Polski, bo chcę nauczyć się polskiego. Przyjechałem do Polski, bo chcę nauczyć się polskiego. 
I came to Poland because I want to study Polish or actually I want to learn Polish. So you probably noticed that this nauczyć się is a little bit different than what we had here, uczem się, like there is this na at the beginning. Yes, it's, it's infinitive form, yes, but there is a na at the beginning, so it's kind of what, the, what, what is happening, right? But this na is actually, it's just showing us that this person wants to learn fo uh, Polish and this is like a complete action, so it's a perfective uh, aspect of a verb. This means that it's already over, completed, doesn't mean that it's already happened, but it means that I want to learn, like fully learn, finish it, not only like study and maybe fail. No, I want to learn and, and actually succeed. That's what nauczyć means, that's the difference. Uczem się means I'm studying now, but I still have a lot of to learn. Nauczyć, nauczyć się here, it means that it's already completed. So I, I came to Poland because I want to, maybe in the future, I chcę, that's not past, that's future, nauczyć się polskiego. In the, in the future, because I want to fully learn Polish, that's why I came to Poland, I'm already in Poland. So again, you can change this present tense to past tense and there is absolutely no problem with that. So let's wrap it up. We have two ways of giving reasons in Poland and the major difference is the structure. And because the structure is a little bit different, the meaning on the second part, yeah, I had to add this word chcę, so it changes a little bit. And one way is to use żeby or aby, and you can use either, whichever you prefer. And those are always being followed by infinitive. So it can be one word, one verb, or it can be a phrase, but the verb in this phrase has to be an infinitive. Now, another way of saying, uh, of giving reasons, is to use bo, and bo is always followed by a sentence. So it cannot be followed only by infinitive verb. In this sentence, there can be infinitive verb, but there has to be conjugated verb as well. It has to be a sentence, basically. So those are our two ways of giving reasons in Polish. And please also remember that żeby, when it's followed by past tense, it can be used, or actually it is used, to give requests, to make requests, not, not reasons. So that the meaning changes, so this is very important, the infinitive part here. Your condition is not getting better, and you decide to go to the nearby clinic. You receive a medical report. What is the diagnosis? You receive a medical report. What is the diagnosis? The diagnosis is Food poisoning caused by contaminated food. Zatrucie pokarmowe spowodowane przez skażoną żywność. The day after ordering an item online, you receive an email notification. How can you track your package?
How can you track your package? The email says that you can track your package on this website by logging into your account and after logging in, click on your order history and enter the order number found in this email. Możesz śledzić swoją przesyłkę na tej stronie logując się do swojego konta. Po zalogowaniu kliknij na swoją historię zamówień i wprowadź numer zamówienia znajdujący się w tej wiadomości. If you've studied your target language, but you can barely understand native speakers, you might be doing something wrong. You know the vocabulary and grammar they're using, but for some reason when they speak at a faster speed, you can't keep track of what's going on. Why is this happening? Have you spent all this time learning in vain? This is a common issue that all language learners face at some point or another. The truth is, it's actually a good problem to have because only students with a higher level of skill will experience it. When you know a lot of the language, but have trouble understanding native speakers, the problem is almost always with your listening skills. Learning what words mean and practicing how to use them in a sentence are both invaluable skills to develop. But people often forget that in addition to speaking, writing, and reading, we have to develop our listening skills in a foreign language as well. In this video, we'll look at three practical ways to improve your listening skills. Number one, practice active listening. One of the best ways to practice listening is to, well, listen to your target language. But this doesn't mean putting on some music and listening to it in the background as you do other things. You need to practice active listening. Get your hands on a recording of spoken language. You can use a movie, news broadcast, or a podcast. You can even try subscribing to a YouTube channel. Listen to a segment of the audio and do your best to write down what you hear. After a couple tries at this, go back and double check what you wrote against the script of what was actually said. If you're watching a movie, you can double check yourself by turning on the subtitles. Our language learning program is one of the best tools for developing your listening skills. You can listen to the conversation in a lesson and then check it back against the lesson transcripts. This is simple, easy, and you can be sure that the transcripts are correct. Number two, practice pronunciation. Any problems you have pronouncing new words correctly will be reflected back in your listening skills. It's hard for your brain to decipher and remember a sound, be it a letter or a word, that you don't know how to make yourself. A good accent will give you the ability to hear and pick out the otherwise unnatural new sounds. To develop your accent, focus on any sounds or letters that feel difficult or unnatural for you. Once you get more comfortable with the basic sounds, start to combine them using words and whole sentences. Listen to native speakers as much as possible and take note of how words and sounds can blend, morph, or get dropped in rapid speech. Do your best to listen to this phenomenon and imitate what you hear. Focus more on how the syllables are said together rather than simply saying the words next to each other. There is often a significant difference between how words are said individually and how they are said when spoken together in a rapid fire sentence. This is a big part of the reason language learners can know a lot of vocabulary and grammar but still not understand native speakers. Our playback feature is great for pronunciation practice. You can play back the podcast itself or listen to words individually. You can even listen back at a slower speed if you're having trouble catching the correct pronunciation at native speaker speed. Number three, make listening part of your routine. Now that you've started practicing active listening and pronunciation, make it a part of your regular learning. A lot a specific amount of time for each of your listening activities. For example, you might practice 10 minutes of active listening, followed by 10 minutes of practicing vowels, and then 10 minutes of imitation practice with a podcast. Now, you don't have to use this schedule exactly. Tailor it to your own needs and availability. The point is that you should make a conscious and decisive effort to practice your listening skills on a regular basis. It could be 30 minutes a day, or it might be 10. What matters most is that you practice consistently. 
These three tips will help you close any gap that might exist between your knowledge of your target language and your listening abilities. Understanding native speakers may seem daunting at first, but with a little time and perseverance, you will see your skills improve. Few things are more discouraging than putting in the work and effort to learn a foreign language, only to not use it for a while and forget a large part of what you studied. Once you have a good handle on a language, it's not hard to practice it so that it stays in the forefront of your mind. In this video, we'll take a look at five practical ways you can make your target language a part of your daily life so that you don't forget it. Number one, use language exchanges. The idea behind a language exchange is that you find someone who fluently speaks your target language and is also interested in learning your native language. During the exchange, you spend half the time speaking in the language you're learning and the other half in the language they're learning. This kind of exchange is a great way to practice your speaking skills and cement the material you've learned into your brain. One great thing about practicing through a language exchange is that your language partner is a fellow language learner. They will be able to sympathize with your struggles and even give you some insightful tips from their own personal experience. Most major cities will have at least one meetup or language club where you can practice languages with people from around the world. But sometimes it can be hard to find people who speak the language you're learning. If you can't find a local exchange or if there are no native speakers in your city, you can connect with native speakers through online language exchanges. There are numerous free sites that allow you to search for users based on country and language and have a text, audio, or video practice session. Number two, immerse yourself digitally. Most phones, laptops, and apps will allow you to change the language of their interface. Why not change it to your target language? This simple change may seem small, but it can actually be an effective way to reinforce your use of the language. Your language skills are like a muscle. If you use them on a regular basis, then your skill in the language will be in good shape. The more you use your language skills, the easier it will be to remember things. However, if you go for long stretches without using the language, then you might have a problem. Those linguistic muscles will start to get weak before too long, and you'll notice a drop in your language ability. Simply changing the language on your electronic devices won't equate to any heavy lifting in a foreign language, but it could be comparable to a warm-up or a quick workout. Remember that you probably use electronic devices every day. If you can use at least some of that time thinking in your target language while using them each week, that adds up to a huge amount of time and can keep your knowledge fresh. Number three, teach others a language. You don't have to be an expert in a new language to lend a hand to another language learner. Helping a beginner through the language will not only make you feel good about helping someone out, it will also help you use the language and keep your skills sharp. Remember those language exchanges we talked about? Well, what if you looked for other learners so that you could help them in the language? Don't worry if you don't feel qualified to teach the language. They're not looking to get their PhD in linguistics. Most likely, a new learner would appreciate someone who's been down the road before, someone to show them some common pitfalls and shortcuts. Have you ever been a complete newbie in something and been graciously helped by someone with more experience? Pay it forward and be that expert to someone else. Your language muscles will thank you for it. Number four, keep a journal or blog. Writing out your thoughts in a foreign language is one of the best ways to sharpen your skills. It forces you to take time to construct sentences and it will reveal your weak points very quickly. Journaling is also one of the easiest and cheapest ways to practice. All you need is a pen and a notebook. If you're not the journaling type, don't worry. You don't have to write an autobiography. Simply recounting your day or describing an experience will be enough to get your language juices flowing. The entries can be long, but they don't have to be. This exercise is flexible and can take any shape you want. Try writing short daily entries. You can even post them online for native speakers to correct. This way, you can hold yourself accountable and write regularly. There are several free sites that allow you to post an entry and have it reviewed by native speakers. Number five, entertain yourself in the language. Books, movies, YouTube videos, language learning websites, music, the list goes on. There's an endless supply of media out there, so you're likely to find something that interests you in your target language. Whether you love sports, rock music, or sewing, you're sure to find something to entertain you in your target language. Learning a language is hard, but remembering it doesn't have to be. These ideas are here to help jumpstart your brain. These aren't the only ways to practice your target language either. Do your best to use the language on a daily basis and make it a part of your everyday life. Remember, all languages aren't just spoken, they're lived. The fear of making mistakes is one of the biggest roadblocks to language learning. 
Out of all the discomforts that come with learning a foreign language, nothing looms quite as daunting in the mind of a beginner. It's almost as if we're hardwired to want perfection when we speak. However, the reality is that mistakes are unavoidable. In fact, mistakes are an integral part of the learning process. Think of small children who are just starting to learn language. They mispronounce words, they use words incorrectly, and their grammar isn't very good. Sometimes they even make up their own words. Research shows that this is all a natural part of the process. If making mistakes made up such a huge part of learning our native language, why do you expect it to be any different when learning a foreign one? In this video, we'll talk about six ways you can benefit from your mistakes while learning language. Number one, be humble. There's no room for pride when you're learning a new language. If you're a beginner, native speakers will likely be very accommodating with your mistakes and slower reaction times during conversations. There's no reason to be embarrassed. Remember that it's a sign of respect to learn another person's language. No one expects you to speak flawlessly right from the start. No one's going to hold your mistakes against you, so make sure you don't either. Number two, don't play the comparison game. Whether it's a native speaker or another person learning the language, don't make the mistake of comparing your progress to someone else's. No doubt, at the beginning, there will be times when it feels like everyone is speaking perfectly and you're left in the dust. But try not to get discouraged. It's your race to run, not theirs. Everyone has their own story, their own reason, and their own method for learning. Comparing your progress to someone else's progress is like comparing apples and oranges. It's easy to stress out when someone speaks perfectly while you're struggling to make the most basic sentences. But don't forget that while you can easily see someone else's success, you're much less likely to see the hard work that got them there. Every speaker you meet had to learn the language at some point. Whether it was as a child or as an adult, they too had to wade through their mistakes before they could speak fluently. Number three, get feedback on your mistakes. Anytime you write or speak your target language, try to get feedback from someone who speaks that language. You can make mistakes day and night, but if they're never corrected, they do you no good. If you can't learn from a mistake, or if you don't know that it's a mistake, it won't help you. Many in the language learning community hold that feedback is an integral part of the language acquisition process. Encourage friends and language partners to correct your speaking anytime, all the time. Worst case scenario, you'll make a mistake 100 times and get corrected 100 times. It might seem frustrating, but it's all worth it on the 101st time when you finally remember your mistake and start speaking correctly. Some mistakes will be easy to fix and you'll adjust your speaking right away. Others might take a while. Speaking a foreign language is a little bit like juggling. There are a lot of moving pieces you have to keep in place. Whether it's pronunciation, grammar, or vocabulary, getting feedback on your effort will help refine your language skills until you feel comfortable in the language. Number four, listen to your brain. After all the practice and feedback, eventually you'll start to notice that certain words come to mind without having to think about them. Instead of having to scan your brain for the latest new vocabulary word, you begin to instinctively come up with a word for a given sentence. Don't hesitate to blurt this word out. Sometimes it will be completely wrong. Other times it will be dead on. When words start coming to mind instinctively, that means your brain is starting to get more and more used to using a new language. The incorrect words are sort of like growing pains. You'll have them for a little while, but over time you'll encounter them less and less until all of your instinctual words are correct. So don't let the fear of making a mistake short circuit your brain's natural learning process. Go with whatever word your brain gives you. Number five, never take the easy way out. If there are two ways to say what you want to say in your target language, one you know and are comfortable with, and the other you're not sure of, use the one you're least comfortable with. Purposely choose subjects and sentence constructions that are difficult for you. Don't get complacent and fall into the trap of using the same phrase over and over again, or having the same type of conversation with a language partner. You always want to push your language skill boundaries to stretch them even further. Number six, enjoy the language for its own sake. Small children not only make a ton of mistakes when they learn to speak, they also have a ton of fun. To them, life and language are both giant mysterious adventures. They aren't worried about making progress, impressing people, or speaking perfectly. Take a note from their playbook. Enjoy the language as you learn it. Let your focus be on the beauty and magic of the language. Savor the times you get to use it. If you loosen up and enjoy the ride, you'll learn much faster. Mistakes are a powerful and indispensable part of learning a language. We hope this video inspires you to stop being afraid of them and start embracing them. Are you improving? 
How to assess your language skills. Have you ever wondered, am I actually getting better with my target language? If you want to know how to check and see if you've improved or not, then keep watching. Today you'll learn why assessment can mean the difference between fluency and failure, how to assess your language skills, even if you're learning on your own, and much more. But first, listen up. Here are this month's new lessons and resources. First, the writing a journal cheat sheet. With this cheat sheet, you'll be able to keep a diary in your target language and talk about your day. Inside, you'll find phrases for common daily activities from morning to night. Second, if you love travel, then you'll love our brand new travel words and phrases PDF ebook. Learn all the must know travel phrases. Download it for free right now. Third, must know words and phrases for your resume. If you want to write your resume in your target language, then this next one minute lesson is for you. Fourth, the top 12 April Fools phrases. Want to prank others and speak more of your target language? Then you'll want this April Fools phrase list. Fifth, must know vocab for doing laundry. If you need language for practical situations like doing laundry, then this one minute lesson is for you. You'll learn how to say washing machine, detergent, softener, and much more. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Okay, let's jump into today's topic. Are you improving? How to assess your language skills. So, have you ever wondered, am I actually improving with my target language? Feeling like you're not improving can hurt your motivation. On the flip side, if you notice yourself understanding more of the language than before, you can feel good, and that can fuel your motivation to keep going. But it's not easy to spot your improvement. It's tricky with language. It's not like going to the gym, where you can see your muscles in the mirror. This is where assessment comes in. What's assessment? The easiest example of assessment is a test. If you go to a language class, you'll get a test on the first day. The goal of the assessment test is to understand where your language level is and any test after that is a way to see how much you've improved. This is ongoing assessment. So assessment is checking where you are now and how far you've come with your language learning. Assessment lets you see where you've improved and helps you find what you need to work on. If you're serious about learning a language, it's one of the best things you can do to stay on track, stay motivated, correct your mistakes, and reach fluency. But assessing yourself is also hard if you're learning on your own. So what can you do? Here's how you can assess your language skills, whether you're learning with our program or not. Number one, if you're a Premium Plus user, retake the assessment test. Technically, you can only take this once, but if you get in touch with our support team, we'll give you the link. If you're using any other resource, find a way to test yourself. Look for practice tests, apply for a proficiency test, take online quizzes, anything that forces you to test your language skills. Number two, revisit old lessons. An easier way to self-assess your language level is to revisit old lessons. You can do this with any program you're learning with. If you've truly made progress, then you should be able to understand the lesson dialogues with no problem. If not, then you know that you need to review them some more. Number three, try harder lessons. Also something you can do with any language resource. If you're using our program, try lessons from a higher level. If you're a lower intermediate, try upper intermediate lessons. If you don't understand anything, that's fine. But if you do, then that's a good sign that you've improved and are ready for harder lessons. Number four, for reading, check out our extensive reading books. These are available for all levels, from absolute beginner to advanced. You can reread old ones or try harder ones to see where your current level is. You'll find these books in our lesson library. This will help you assess your reading and comprehension skills. Number five, for speaking, use our voice recording tool. If you can easily repeat the lines from the conversation, that's a good sign. Or, if you're using another program, try to shadow the provided conversations. If you can do it without a problem, then you've made progress and are ready to go to the next level. Number six, for writing, try and copy out our lesson dialogue by hand. The point here is to see if you can write smoothly or not as a way of assessing your writing. You can also do this with any textbook. You can also take a picture of your writing and send it to your Premium Plus teacher for feedback. Number seven, use our Premium Plus assignments. If you're a Premium Plus member, you can ask your teacher to send you weekly assignments based on your needs, whether for reading, writing, speaking, or listening. And they'll provide you feedback so you can see where you are with each skill. So to recap, 
One, take our assessment test. Two, revisit old lessons. Three, try harder lessons. Four, use our extensive reading books for reading. Five, use our voice recording tool. Six, write out dialogues by hand. And seven, take advantage of our assignments. Remember, the point of assessment is not to pass or fail, but to see where you've improved and where you need to work. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Great work. Here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and eBooks for free. Just click the link in the description.